Hallelujah. This uh, this evening we got some announcements. Wanna wanna take time to remind you of our regular services every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Every Sunday evening at six, and of course every Wednesday we have our midweek service at seven. Uh, it's important, amen, to try to make it in the middle of the week. Um, Sunday to Sunday is a hard time to is a hard thing for your, the Spirit of God in you to survive, amen. So I want to encourage you to be part of the Wednesday service. Uh, follow us on uh, on YouTube, Facebook, amen, amen, and uh, you can catch up with us there. Um, don't forget this coming Saturday, this coming weekend we're going to Ensenada for revival, amen. Uh, Pastor Gustavo, amen, he sent me a short video uh, uh, yesterday, amen, that they're excited for the revival, they're getting the church ready, amen, they're painting it and everything, amen, and they're expecting, amen, to hear from God this, this week, amen, uh, no pressure, Pastor Ben, but you know what, they're expecting God to come this week, amen, uh, which reminds me, amen, you know what, this Tuesday, I want to have prayer, amen, we're going to have prayer this Tuesday, amen, so uh, we're just it was first Tuesday, it was last Tuesday, but we're going to do it this Tuesday, man, uh, due to circumstances. So we're going to do it this Tuesday. Um, most likely I'll be fasting on Tuesday uh, for this revival, amen, because I want to make sure that, uh, that you know what, that God speaks, amen, God touches hearts, amen. Uh, it'll be a good time, amen. Uh, don't forget, October the 1st and 2nd, there is the Healing Crusade in El Central, California. They, they rented out the minor league baseball team's park. Amen. They have a big billboard on the on the side of the highway, the main road out there for the church. Amen. That's going to be really good. Uh, uh, Pastor Evangelist Tim Walker. Amen. Great, great preacher. Great man of God. Amen. So you know what? Uh, Want to uh, encourage you to be a part of that. Amen. And then looking forward into November. Amen. We have uh, the Women's Conference in El Centro. Also, amen. It's a two-day event. It's a Friday and Saturday. Amen. Want to encourage you to be a part of that. Uh, these are all the announcements this evening. Amen. We're going to lift up an offering. Amen. So let's worship God. Amen. As worship comes forward. Amen. You know what? This uh, this evening, amen, you give with an open heart. Amen. You trust in God this, this evening. Uh, you know what? Uh, the first comes, the first goes, and God always pays his bills, amen. Thank you, Jesus, amen. Uh, and uh, But you know what, it all, go, it all comes down to the faithful men and women, amen, who support the ministry, amen. Um, so you know what, you, you, you continue to be faithful, amen, in your giving. Uh, we are looking for a new building, because uh, they are going to be tearing this building down, so we are actively looking for a new building. Um, I found a couple... Amen. That are extremely out of our league. Amen. And I'm believing in God for miracles. Amen. Because when I got this building, it was out of our league. Amen. So praise the Lord. Amen. Um, we're believing in God for big things. Amen. We're looking for a building that has its own parking lot, its own playground, its own uh, fellowship hall, prayer room, sanctuary. I mean, we really, I even want one with a house on the property. Amen. amen. So we can rent it out to somebody. Amen. Yeah. You know what? We're believing in God for big things. Amen. Because you know what, the further we go, amen, you know, we're going to continue touching the world for Jesus, amen. Yes, amen. And it's all done through, amen, your generosity, amen. So you continue to pay your tithes, your offerings besides. Remember, we're going to Itzanada this weekend, amen. And as a church, we like to take an offering down to Itzanada, amen, uh, to the churches that we go do this for in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just want to bless them with an offering, amen. Let them know that, you know what, that there's a church in Drupal Valley, amen, that supports the works of God around the world, amen. So we're going to do that, amen. And, uh, you give, if you give without, amen, you just put it, put it in the, in the offering basket, write a note, put, uh, for, uh, for Mexico, for missions, whatever you want to put down, amen, so we know that the money goes directly for that, amen. So we're going to, we're going to, uh, we're going to bow our hearts, amen, as Brother uh, Jesse bless the gift of the gift. Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you thanks, Lord, for the opportunity to be in your house, Lord. Father God, Lord, that we are able to continue to stay here. Father God, Lord, that your hand is upon us, Father God, Lord. Father God, Lord, these are willing hearts, Father God, Lord, that belong to you, Father God, Lord. Giving willingly, Father God, Lord, out of obedience, Father God, Lord, that it is all yours and that you continue to bless your people, Father God, Lord. Meet their finances, Father God, Lord, as we meet the finances of the church, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. And what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels are before him. So tonight we've been going through, on Sundays, the last few Sundays, we haven't had an evening service. Um, and uh, on Sunday nights, we've been, we go through the book of, uh, we've been going through the book of 2 Corinthians. And as I'm prepping for, for this study, amen. It's it's a trip because it, because all I'm doing is just going through the book of you know the book of Second Corinthians right now, and each Sunday would have been just where it lies. I don't skip around or anything. Chapter one one Sunday, chapter two another Sunday, and you can go on YouTube and find them all <clears throat> and watch them in order. And we haven't had an evening service in, uh, for the last two weeks, and uh, due to circumstances and. It's, events over this past week um, I, was pre I was prepping for today and I'm reading it and, it's, and it seems like it's, it's a perfect chapter for us amen so you know we're gonna we're gonna go through it and what I want is participation so if you guys if you guys have any questions any input anything you want to add amen whether you're in the building or if you're watching online uh, live on the on the band app or on Facebook um, Feel free to, to, to put in your comment. You can put in a comment, words of encouragement. You can put in um, a question, amen, and we will we will read them out loud, amen. Um, and your participation is great, those of you in the building. The same thing, amen, lift your hands, say, hey, you know what, I want to say something, and just just and share, amen, because you know what, that's, that's what makes us successful, amen, is that we're doing this, you know, we don't do, I, I started doing the Bible studies on Sunday nights, I used to do sermons on Sunday nights, and I switched over to Bible studies because I wanted to give everybody, it seemed like I needed to give people opportunity to participate and learn, um, instead of just hearing what Pastor Ben says that you need to do, amen. So doing it this way, man, it kind of puts it in place, and even one of the scriptures that I used for my sermon this morning is even within our reading today. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we're going to read, beginning with verse 1, and we're going to go right through the whole chapter. Amen. The Bible says, when we're talking about what, 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 what Paul's writing at this time, he's talking about the assurance of the resurrection. What that means is, is he's bringing, he's bringing um, words of encouragement and, and, and confirmation about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. you got to remember, before, before Jesus, amen, they, they were waiting for the Messiah, they were waiting for 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 the, the risen Christ, um, they didn't. Not everybody believed that Jesus was was the Messiah, um, and and there was a lot of conversions going along going around. There was a lot of people that were that were uh, at this time that it was basically everybody was born born into Judaism, and they were following the Jewish the, the Jewish traditions and the laws of Moses. And what Paul's doing is he's, and he's bringing the assurance of the resurrection of Christ and the promise of heaven and, 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 and the importance of who, who Jesus is and how he is the Son of God who is God in the flesh. So let's let's start with uh, verse 1. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. It says, For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent grown, being burned, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed that morality, mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared, now he 
who has prepared for us this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. I'm going to stop right there. Okay, so Paul's talking, and they're obviously they're in a tent. They're in, they're in, a, in, in a tent of, li of, of living. And he's saying, he says, he says right at the beginning, he says, For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God. A house not made with hands, an etern eternal in heaven. He says, if things pass away here on earth, if things fade away, if things get destroyed here on earth, rest assured that God has prepared a house for us. That, that there, is an eter there is an eternal house that has been prepared for us. That this that the tent that he's, he's saying, the tent that we see is just a tent. The house that we see is just a house. But it's the promise of God that there's, gonna, there's more to what you have than, rather than just what you see. Because we can get caught up in what we see in front of us. I see this in front of us. So if, if we come and we see the fans... We say, well, I, I got a, I, I see the fans. I'll be cool because there's fans. If I need a breeze to cool me down, I can plug it in, turn it on. I know I got the breeze to cool me down. Yeah. But if we say, well, God is going to cool you down. Just go outside and you'll see. We're going to have to go out there, stand in faith and hope and believe that that's actually going to happen. It may not be a windy day. You may not get that breeze. So then it becomes, well, I don't know. Is God real? Is God not real? What Paul's saying is, you don't, you don't need to worry about that. That it's a promise given to us that, that what you see, even, even if it was to be cast aside, that there's still something greater than this. That you don't worry about your home, the tent. Don't worry about that because, because God is preparing something better. And he says in verse 5, he says, Now he who has prepared, prepared us for this very thing is God. Okay? So the very thing that we go through, the very thing that we're uncertain of, the very thing that we, that we still have doubt in our minds of, he says, that very thing God has prepared us for, who has also given us the Spirit as a guarantee. Now what does that mean? See, we did a baptism last Sunday. And, and there's a lot of religious organizations that will baptize in the name of the Father only or the name of the Son only. But not everybody does it in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're Christians. The Bible says Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We do Father, Son, Holy Spirit. If it's not in the Bible, we don't do it. We only do what's in the Bible. And, and the Holy Spirit, when Jesus Christ when Jesus Christ was crucified and then he resurrected from the dead, and then, and then he descended into heaven. The Holy Spirit fell upon us. And what was the whole, what, what, what is the other thing they called the Holy Spirit at the time? It was the, the Comforter. Okay? So the Comforter, which was the Holy Spirit. The Comforter was the, was the Spirit of God that's, that's going to dwell in you. That's going to bring that comfort you need. It's going to bring, it's that, it's that thing that you see when you see other people talking um, so as a matter of fact about God. I talk as a matter of fact when I'm speaking of God. What that means is I, I say this is what it is. That's it. It's what it is. But how do you know? Well, the Bible says it. This is what it is. It's the word of God. It, 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 I'm, it was a matter of fact as, as you can get. I don't, I don't waver from it. I don't change my mind about it. I don't, put, I don't put earthly logic into it where I say, yeah, but you know... Um, you know, I heard that in this other state, they think it this way, or in this other church, they think of it that way. I don't think of it that way. My, my mentality is very simple. The Word of God is a matter of fact. It's not, it's written in black and white, not in gray. It's also written in red when Jesus is talking. Amen. But it's not written in, in invisible ink. Amen. It's, it's written in, in truth. Yes. So Paul says that, that, that the Spirit had been given to us as a guarantee to bring that comfort, to bring that that peace, to bring that 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 knowledge of knowing that you know how you, when you just know, I just know, you know you just know. It's that the spirit of God that brings that comes into where you just know, 
It's going to be okay. There's a lot of things that happen. But you know what? I know it's going to be okay. Yeah. I may not like all the things that happen. I may not understand all the things that, are, that have happened. But one thing I do know, it's going to be okay. Why? Because God has already prepared this and has given us the spirit as a guarantee to let us know that it's going to be okay. Yeah. Does anybody have any, any questions, any comments to that so far? Anybody online? <sighs> okay, we're going to continue on verse 6. In verse 6 it says, So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Where is at home in the body? Here. We're here. While we are at home in the body, while we are here in the body, while we are seeing one another, while we are talking to one another, while we can still touch one another. It says, while we are at home in the body, we're absent from the Lord. What does that mean? Well, we're living by faith, right? It's the faith that we have in God and what Jesus Christ has done for us that we know that heaven is promised to us. It's, it's through that faith. It's through the faith that we know that Jesus Christ, that he did resurrect the third day and that he was the Messiah and that, and that it was his blood that was shed for the, re, for the remission of our sins. It is through that faith. But as long as we're in our body, the Bible says, it says, as long as we're at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Verse 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. This is hard. I want you to understand this. We walk by faith and not by sight. Doesn't mean close your eyes and start stumbling over everything because you're going to stumble. <laughs> Amen. I, I, I have a hard enough time walking with my eyes open. So if I start closing my eyes, forget it. Okay, but it says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. What does that mean? You can have somebody that's deep in faith and saying, no, this is what it is. This right here, this is what it is. But if you're not deep in faith, you're like, well, they say that's what it is, but I'm not sure if it is. Right. But if you're deep in faith, no, yep, that's what it is. I agree. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that. I'm in agreement with that. That's why as Christians, we say the word amen. To say amen is to say I'm in agreement. So, so whenever the preacher's preaching or saying something, you say amen, it's you're in agreement. I agree with that. I co-sign that. I believe that. That right there, I believe it. So it's, 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 <clears throat> it says we walk by faith, not by sight. And when we, when we walk in by faith, you're believing in something that you haven't seen, right? You believe in something you haven't seen. So if you're, if you're not full of faith and you're going by what they're saying, there's no confidence yet, right? In verse eight, we are confident. It says, okay, we'll go back to seven. So it's for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Yes. So let me read this whole thing together from six to eight. So we are always, so we are always confident, knowing that while we were at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. Amen. What a powerful scripture. You have nothing else highlighted in your Bible. Highlight that, 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 that scripture. Amen. To be absent in your body is to be present with the Lord. And that's why I said when... when you know, we're just going through the chapters. I'm not jumping back and forth or anything. It's just the chapter. This is just the next chapter that we're on. And, it, and, it, and as a church, you know, this is, I think, important for us to go through uh, in this time. 
To be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord, which means, okay, we're passing through. We're living by faith. Right. And we serve, we serve a God that's bigger than all of us. When we stand in faith, given by the Spirit, a guarantee that, that God has left us, that He has prepared us for this very thing, the Bible says, we just read, and we walk by faith, we're able to walk by faith knowing that the moment we are absent in our body, we are instantly present with the Lord. Yes, that's right. How important is that? It's extremely important. Why do, why do we serve God? Why, 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 why do you serve God today? Why do you say, okay, I gave my life to God and I'm going to serve God? What's the purpose of it? It can't be just for you to get to heaven. It, it can't be. It, it, that, it, that can't be the reason. Yes, we need to get to heaven. Yes, I'm not taking that away from you. But that can't be the sole reason. For our loved ones also to reach heaven. For our loved ones. I am serving God and made a stand for God. And this morning I said this. I said, my family, they know better than to try to invite me somewhere on a Sunday. It just ain't going to happen. They know better. And I say that because I want them to know that when I'm absent in my body and present with the Lord, when my time comes, that what's going to happen is that they're going to know he was a man of faith. They're going to know that, you know what, no matter what, he was in church. Yes, amen. That's right. They're going to know that, you know what, I don't know what dad did or what grandpa was doing, but all I know is that, that he had to be in church, and we didn't bug him when it came to the days of church because he had to put God first. And what does that do? That gives, that gives us generational salvation. That's right. Amen. Right? That means that because of the faith of one, it overflows into the next generation. Well, the one may, may be in the presence of the Lord now, but that but the faith of that one, it overflows into the next generation. Yes, amen. To where now you got kids standing in faith because of the faith of a parent, who now overflow it into the, into the grandkids, who overflows it into the great-grandkids because of the faith of the parent. So the Bible says, be absent in the body of the present with the Lord. Amen. What an important scripture. Yes, that's right. Extremely important scripture. Because it's sometimes it's so hard. Now, is this automatic? Anybody walking out there can be out to the body and make heaven their home. Anybody can. Yes. Now the question is, does, every, any, does everybody do it? Right. See, I will say this. I only say things that I know to believe to be true. I don't say things that I hope might just bring comfort. Mm -hmm. For instance, I've had to talk to people who've lost loved ones who were sinners. Mm -hmm. they, lost them in, they lost them in sin. They lost them in sin. I mean, they, were, they overdosed, they, whatever the situation might have been, and they lost them in sin. No, I'm not harsh with them to say, well, you know, too bad they died as a drug addict because they're burning in hell now. No. No, you don't do that. That's, that's, right. that's no. ridiculous. But you bring comfort. Yes, yes. amen. Yeah. But I won't tell that same person, that family, that same person, rest assured they're in heaven. Right. Because I don't know. Certain people, rest assured they are in heaven. Why? Because there's, ev there's mm -hmm. evidence of heaven that was left in their life. Yes. So when, 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 when the Bible says to be absent in the body and present with the Lord, when you, when you become absent in your body, was there evidence that you had a part of heaven in you already? Was there evidence that, that Jesus Christ was real in your life? Was there evidence that eternal life existed? When that evidence when that evidence is there and it's clear, I stand with boldness and say, oh, no, 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 they're in heaven. I, I make no mistake, they're in heaven. Why? Because there's evidence. It was there. It's real. And, 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 and if we just turn around and say, well, everybody makes it, right. 
then we diminish and remove the power of the cross and the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And why do we need to stand in faith or walk by faith anymore? Yeah. Reality is, that's why I say we only go by what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. I can't go by what I think. I can only go by what the Bible says. Yeah. Any yeah. questions? Any input? <clears throat> Amen. So let's go on. Verse 9. Therefore we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to Him. It says Him. Who is Him? Capital H. Talking about God, Jesus Christ. It says, therefore we make it our aim. It means that this is what we're going to try to do. This is what we're going to, this is our goal. This is, this is what we're looking, this is what we're going to focus on. Whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to God, well-pleasing to Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. For we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That each one may receive the thing done in the body according to what he has done whether good or bad. Let me stop right there. He says, he says, we will all stand before the judgment seat. Remember, Paul is having a conversation to, to people gathered inside of a tent. Remember, he started talking about, you know, about being home and, and away and how God's preparing a place and you're not just this tent. And, he, and that's what he's talking about. He goes, he goes, listen. He goes, He goes, we're all going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Think about this. We're all going to stand before, stand before the judgment seat of Christ. I just told you, not everybody who dies makes it to heaven. It's just not, it's just not, this is not the way it works. Right. That's not, at least that's not the way the Bible says it to be. You must, there must be evidence of Jesus Christ in your life. There must be an evidence that you've given your life to God. People around you will know. We know if you have. That's why I say I only saved it with confidence to certain people. Yeah, they made it to heaven. I know they did. Why do you know? Because the Bible tells me if as long as they accepted Jesus Christ and they tried, they're making it. Right. That's what my Bible tells me. Right. So now let's take let's take all that aside. Because not everybody, anybody, you know, dying, overdose, whatever it might be. <laughs> it says. That we're all going to sit, stand before the judgment seat of Christ. That each one may receive the things that they have done in the body. So think of the bigger picture. Especially as we're young. I, I, I think back. And I, I, I see movies and stuff. And I see these youngsters on these movies. And I'm thinking... Don't they have any self-respect? And, and, and then I then I sit back and I go, okay, hold on, man. You're talking like an old man again. <laughs> you were once that, that age. <laughs> then I start thinking about it through my, my 20 year old eyes. Thinking, oh yeah, I used to do that too. Man, I was an idiot. <laughs> I still think about these things, right? Man, I was messed up. Right. Thinking about the things that they do and, and you know, you see the, the, the stuff on, on the news, you know, the crime and the people, the, the violence and the, and the killings. And, and you see all this stuff that's going on, the drug dealings, and, and, and you're like, what's wrong with these people? But then I'm thinking, oh, wait a minute, I actually did the same thing. They just got caught. Oh, wow. You know, and I, I was going only one place doing all that stuff. So when you look at the big picture, Paul says, Paul says that we're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. All of us. Which means, it says according to, our, to or what we've done in our bodies, who we are, according to who we are, how, how we've done things, whether good or bad, we're going to be judged by it. Now, put that into perspective. Well, I'm still young. Yeah, I'm doing this. And yeah, eventually I'll do that, but right now I got, this is this this feels good. This tastes good. 
you know, it seems right. How come, you know, it's, it's logical. You know, and, 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 and you know that, that it's what's messed up in today's society is that we have a generation of people who, who have been raised and are being raised to not look at sin, but to look at, look at things with strict compassion only. Which is you need to have compassion. Don't get me wrong. But when you're looking at when you're looking for life eternal, you got you got you got you got to define define sin within the life. That's right. So we look at things like the big talk of abortion is on right now. There's a huge talk about abortion, and it becomes you know we well, have yeah, but you know and and what about and then you know but then. Uh, and then it's also because, you know, and it's because you're living in a generation, you're living in a time of a generation who's never, who never knew uh, anything, anything but abortions were legal. Mm -hmm. We're raising a generation of children now that will never know of a time that smoking marijuana was an illegal thing. Mm -hmm. Well, it's legal now, so it's okay. Okay, well, drinking's been legal for a long time, too. Is that okay? Well, yeah, because it's legal. As long as I'm 21, I'm okay. Okay, well, tell that to the, to, to the parents who've lost, who've lost their children to drinking and driving. Yeah, come on, Mom. Tell that to the child who grew up to be a, a, a young man or a young woman who's now dying of, of liver disease. Yep, yep. But it's okay. And, 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 and we look at it and say, well, well that's, that's fine, it's okay. Because our mentality has been pushed in that direction. You know that what they've done is that in the past 20, 30 years, they have changed the curriculum in schools to teach, even from the teacher's point of view, how a lot of that, a lot of that stuff that Christians believe to be sin is okay, as long as it's compassionate to people and, and you treat people okay. Removing the standards of God. Mm -hmm. and, and they've been doing that for the last 30 years. So now you've got people who are adults who still believe it. And they're living their life in such manner. You know in history that's happened before? Where they wanted to change a group of people. Let me explain this. There was, and, and uh, I'm going to go extreme here, and I, I don't mean to go too extreme, but I'm going to go extreme. There was a man who wanted to rule and take over the world. Not a city, not a state, not a country, but the world. And as he tried to do it, he gets into politics and doesn't make it. He tries to do it, and everyone else was already establishing the ways, and there's too much back and forth, kind of like our two politics of today. So what he decided to do, he says, you know what? I can't get none of the adults to think like I think. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the children. I'm gonna figure out a way to help indoctrinate the children. So when they raise up, they'll be thinking just like me. Right. And when they become adults, we'll give them guns and we'll take over the world. Mm -hmm. True story. That's exactly what Hitler did. That's exactly what Hitler did. He couldn't get the adults in, the pol in politics because he was a politician to follow, follow his way of thinking. So he went to the children and, and created all these, these camps and raised them to think like him. So by the time they became adults, it was a natural thing to believe that he was right. right. What a corrupt thing. That's where we're at today, where we, where we think our thought process of, of right and wrong is okay. Why? Because, well, my teacher taught me that. My teacher, my teacher was really nice. My te oh, my teacher was really nice. You know what? When I went to school, I didn't have any nice teachers. They were mean. They were. They were mean. Man, I have the, the hardest teacher I had in third grade. Her name was Mrs. Criswell. When I got to the sixth grade, I had this stinking teacher again. She went to the sixth grade. By this time, she was Mrs. Thompson. And the biggest thing that baffled me on that was, who the heck's going to marry this lady? She was the devil. <laughs> it was horrible. Always smoking. And you know what? She smoked in class. Oh my gosh. We're talking about 
early, early 80s, early 70s, 80s. And she smoked, man, that was crazy, huh? <laughs> she smoked in class. And then when we were in trouble, we had to sit on her lap. Oh. Imagine sixth graders, we had to sit on her lap. It's, it's the way, it's, it's, it, it, things happen in school that, that, that change things. And I'm getting really far away from, from the study, but the point is this. Our simple logic of what, of what the world has taught us isn't always what's in line with the Word of God. And the Bible clearly states right here that we will sit before the judgment seat of Christ. And it's going to be according to what, to what, what we have done, whether good or bad. Amen? Amen. Any questions, any input so far? Anyone else have a smoking teacher who wanted you to sit on a lap? No. And then she had the smoke, she had that smoking voice. You ever seen Monsters Inc., that lady? Hi, guys. Hi, I'm going to be like on the south. Bless her soul. She's, I know she's gone already, but. That was in Dalnorty Elementary in Ontario. Oh my gosh, horrible. We used to have another teacher, oh. Mr. Acosta. He, uh, he was a kindergarten and first grade teacher. And boy, did he yell. He was screaming all day long. Oh, he looked like Santa Claus, but he was evil. Yeah. Okay, so this is verse 11. Ridiculous. <laughs> Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God. And I also trust are well known in your consci in your consciousness, your consciousness. So he's saying, let me go back up to 10, I'm gonna read it straight through. It says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we, but we are well known to God. And I also trust are well known in your consciousness. He says, he says, knowing the terror of the Lord. And, 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 and I, want, I, want you to, I want you to think about that, the terror of the Lord. But isn't God love? Right? Isn't God just love? Isn't God joy and peace? Isn't, isn't God just compassion? Why, why would Paul say terror of the Lord? Because he's just saying. Is against sin. Remember, he said we're going to sit before the judgment seat. See, we like we like the tattoo that says that says only God can judge me, right? Right. We think we think, we think we're all that because we got that tattoo. Only God can judge me. That's right. Only God can judge me. You just, you stay out. You only God can judge me. That's real. God is. That's right. And remember, he says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. See, God, God is going to judge us. The terror of the Lord. That should, that, should, that should be scary. Because God will judge us according to who we were here on earth. That's why, that's why, go for it. God is going to judge us. And when people call us here and we tell them stuff that we're judging them, we're not judging them, we're just trying to give them correction in the right direction. It's a good point. Listen to this. I'm going to go off, going to go off again here a little bit. I'm not going to talk about my elementary anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know how many people I know about that thing, teacher? I did that. I did that. Okay, so. <laughs> as, as a Christian, as a Christian father, my wife is the same one. 
We will tell our children, can't do that. Our kids know there's certain things they just don't want to do. I, I have told my son that if you keep cussing in my house, you're going to be homeless. Yep. Yeah, I, I don't even want you talking like that in my house. I don't talk that way in my house. You ain't talking that way in my okay. house. I don't care. I, I don't. I really don't. You can go live in your car. That's your problem, not mine. Since you can't control your tongue, how hard is it to control your tongue? Is that your, is the way you speak more important than, 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 than respecting the house of God? So, so I'm, I'm pretty straightforward about it. I'm pretty straightforward about it. And here's the thing. Does it mean I don't love my son? Absolutely not. I love him to death. I'll do anything for him. Okay? Except compromise his sin. That's right. I won't compromise his sin. Yep, come on. But I, I'll do anything else for him. But I won't compromise his sin. Now, let's say I never tell my son those things. Let's say I just let my son live his life. Just go ahead and do what you want. It's okay, man. It's okay. God still loves you. God is love. And love is God. Okay. One day he's gonna die. Stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Be judged by the terror of the Lord. Did I love my son for telling him to be, you better knock it off, or did I love my son for allowing him to be judged and condemned to hell? Because that's reality, right? That's reality. So when Christians, like Brother Jeff saying, it's, it, it's, it's, we're bringing correction, but it's, it's not even so much correction. It's actually bringing love. So when you have, when you have a Christian in your life who's, who's saying, hey, 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 don't, don't, don't do that. You shouldn't be doing that. You know what? The Bible says you can start a bright and laugh at Jesus Christ. You know what? You, you know, you can stop that. You know? Yeah, I understand. It doesn't make sense in your head. And I get that the feeling of what you're going through, it, it makes you feel better because this is what you do. I get all that, but you know what? You continue in that, heaven won't be your home. That's actually that's actually love, not condemnation. See, see, the Bible says that Jesus didn't come to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And that's what that is. Is we're not condemning. It's we're trying to bring salvation. Because you could you imagine? Could you imagine? Standing before the judgment seat of Christ. And missing heaven to being your eternal home. And meanwhile, you're standing there looking at God, scared, knowing you're going to get ready to be condemned. But knowing that the person who should have told you never told you. How scary is that? Mm -hmm. Right? How scary is that? That's why as parents, we don't waver. That's why, that's why I said, I don't care. I don't waver. This is what it is. You guys like it, you don't like it, too bad. You don't like it, find your own place. Mm -hmm. I can't afford it. Well, that's your problem, not mine. Yeah. I have to learn to afford my place, you're gonna have to learn to afford your place. Right. I have to get a job and have to get up every day to go do it. Well then guess what? So do you. Right. Yeah, but you don't understand. Well, no, maybe I don't. Why don't you come show me? Right. Because when it comes down to it, is the the, the 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 eternal life of their soul is more important. Okay, let's continue. Verse 4. For we do not command ourselves again, again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf, that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. Or if we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. Amen. And he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. You catch that? He says, he says, one has died for all. And because one has died for all, all should live for the one. Okay? Exactly. Jesus has died for all. 
And because Jesus has died for all, then all should live for Jesus. Well, I accept him. I know him. I love him. I just don't want to do what he tells me. Well, then you don't love him. You love yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's right. selfish. I mean, that's just what it is. Right. Like, there's no way around it, right? Come on, yes. I mean, the truth is truth. But he says, those, if, if Jesus died for all, then isn't it reasonable that all should live for Jesus? That we should just, okay, I'm going to have a hard time giving up a lot of this stuff, but you know what? It's okay. I'm going to do it. Why? Because it, it just, that's what the Bible says. It's, I need to do it. Verse 16. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is in a creation. Old things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. Now all things are, are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the mystery of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. You're an ambassador for Christ. Yes, amen. You are his representative. Amen. You are you are the one who is standing for him. That's what being an ambassador ambassador is. You are you are you are standing in his proxy. You are the one who is representing him and saying, I am talking as if Christ is talking to you. It says now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become righteousness, might become the righteousness of God in him. The bottom line is simple. The bottom line is simple. The chapter, this chapter begins with don't worry about the house you live in because God is preparing a better place for you. That's right. The house you have is going to fade away. Don't worry about that. God is creating a better house for you. So don't worry about that. Stand in faith with God. Then it goes into know this, that we will be judged by God. That, that there is a terror that's involved. That it's gonna, it's not, a, it's not a, a joyful thing. You know when it becomes a joyful thing is when you're living for God. And thank you, Lord, I get to worship you now for all eternity. But how will you worship Him in heaven if you've never did it on earth? Right. How, how? That doesn't make sense. How, how, how will you worship God in heaven for all eternity if you don't even worship God here on earth? You, you don't, you do what you want, live the way you want, and go in. So how, 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 can, how can you do that? It makes no sense. So he says, don't worry about your earthly things. Don't worry about your, about your home. I'm creating another home. But know that in order to get there, there will be a judgment. And the judgment's going to come because it goes into it and says, because Jesus Christ was made sin when he was not of sin. Right. For your sin. Come on. So that you can become righteous. So that you may now inherit the kingdom of God. See, everything is in this one chapter that gives you the full the full blueprint. It gives you the full the full thing, lets you know that you know what there's hope for you. But you're gonna have to accept Jesus and do it. Don't think that you're gonna make it there without him. And no matter what happens in this world, God's still gonna take care of you. It's a powerful, powerful chapter. Like I said, it wasn't a chapter I just jumped back and forth on. It's just it was just the next chapter. If you go on YouTube, you'll see we did chapter uh for last time. So you know what? We're going to end it right there. Um, God has a plan for you. God wants to do something in your life. God wants to change your circumstance. 
He wants to change that, that discomfort you have. He wants to change that unbelief that you have. He wants to change that the way we think, that we think is right. We think what we think is right. And it's not always right. It's not. What we think to be true is only true in our mind because somebody decided to corrupt our mind as a little child. They probably smoked cigarettes and made you sit on their lap. <laughs> but God has a plan for you. God has a plan for you. Yeah. God, wants to, God wants to help you tonight. Amen. So I hope this helped you tonight. Um, know that, you know what, heaven is real. Heaven is real. Heaven is real. It's more real than earth. Amen. Anybody got any any last questions, comments, concerns? For the close? I would, I just wanted to say, um, also like, you know, because I know a lot of people, even though when we go out and we outreach or we try to tell them about God, stuff like that, you know, as, as adults, you know, even though you're adults now, I, I guess it was different when we were growing up. There was a lot of like, no, don't do that. All oh, that is wrong. You know, it was more like that, you know, and now in today's world, it's a compromise. Com they compromise everything. Oh, and God forbid you say something because, oh my gosh, you're bullying me. Everything's a bully. You know, everything's, you can't say anything because you're being, they're being bullied. But that's the thing as an adult, you know, you have to realize um, what you're compromising and the consequences. Yes. And if you're an adult and you have kids, that's going to be the consequence is your kid because whatever you're doing it could be twice as bad on your kids and that's something that you opened the door for because you wanted to compromise you know because it's what's good in your life for that time you know and that's the thing you know I just I remember you know when I was young doing stuff in my 20s <laughs> Um, With the teacher smoking? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I was doing that uh, different stuff in my 20s, but, you know, the consequences, my kids today, you know. Um, I mean, I did go to church and tried to change, and I thought I was trying to change early enough, but, you know, the, my kids are still not living for God, and they're not doing what God wants asses of them and they know they know what it is because I've taken them to church and they were you know kind of raised in church but they're like oh no I don't I want to do this right now it's fun for me right now it's fun for me right now yeah but you might not be able to to ever have that time to get out of that fun but I mean it's just t you know you can't be compromising the things that God those are God's rules just like in school we're in school we had to follow rules and or else you know what happened well for me if i got in trouble ooh, i feared my dad so you know, <laughs> he was he did not play he was no joke but you know it's the same so what you're doing right now in life as you know for us or what we're even compromising and we're saying oh yeah we're you know we're living for god but yet we're compromising stuff still uh-uh all that has to stop you know like you said you know, it's our kids, and we're telling them, uh-uh, you can't be doing that. Oh, don't even think about, you know, well, my ex-son-in-law, who they used to live with us, he brought alcohol in my house. And I said, if I don't drink in my house, you can't drink in my house. So you better get that stuff out of my house right now. And it wasn't no, okay, you can drink it in the front yard. No, none of that. It's throw it in the trash. I'm going to slap you in the face with that. No, just kidding. But, you know, it's like throw it in the trash and get it out of my sight. I don't even want to see it. I don't do it. You don't do it. And that's pretty much what it was. So, I mean, don't compromise. You have to stand your ground. And I know it's hard to do it because you think it's your family. But you know what? They have to see the God in you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jesse, do you have something? Yeah. Uh, like you said, you know, you have to make a choice. And the choice is either good or bad. And what, what you choose is the reward you're going to get. So if you choose... You do good, follow Christ, you do good, Christ stuff. Right. If you choose to do bad, you're going to, your reward is going to be stuff that, that you don't want to happen, or it's going to happen. 
you know, not only within yourself, but within generations to come after you yes. if you don't try to change it today and make the right choice. Just to start by saying life is, and it's not like four is done. Life is in a box of chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You don't know. You don't know. And it's like, um, my grandmother did, she was little, when we first got, you know, started coming, she would come here with us. And she's only eight, but she, she really knows, because she amazes me sometimes. But, you know, if she hears somebody saying bad words, she right away knows that's bad, you know, because Jesse and myself, we don't do that around her. You know, we don't do that at all because we serve God. And she'll tell us, Jesus doesn't like people to say bad words. That's bad. So she's already at a little person. She's already knowing that those are not things that, accept, that God accepts. They're bad. They're not acceptable to God. Therefore, you should not. And I think that's really good for a little person to already know, you know, that you have to obey God's rules, you know? Right. Or else you're gonna not you're gonna fall in the category of going to hell because that's reality. You know, if you don't follow God and you're gonna you're, it's a no win situation. You know, and that's why you gotta stay strong, you know, even as Christians you know, we go through hard times, and we're not, you know, not everything's easy for us either, but we stay going, focusing on God and what God wants for us, whether we, you know, it's hard or not, but we still stay focused. We put our faith in God, because we know God knows what's best for us. Not that we know. We don't know. No, we don't. You know, we think, but we don't know. And... So that's why I say, you know, we have to put our faith and, and trust in God that he, He's going to get us through it. Whether we think it's really bad right now, but you know what? God will get us through it. I'll leave you with this. And so Martha and I, we just did our 29th wedding anniversary last week. And, and so we, if we go through marital problems, I can't just go talk to anybody about it. I can't. We've been married too long. We have adult kids. We have grandkids. We own a house. We, own, we have we have a lot of things going on in our, in our life. So, but I, I would need to speak to somebody like my pastor, you know, somebody or somebody with more marital experience. You don't you don't get marital advice for thirty years of marriage from a, from a new guy because they, they they don't know. They, they you can't. No. They don't not know. They may think they know, they may try to, but they don't know. They may speak logically and say, well, that makes sense and make you feel good about it, but they don't know. They haven't, right. they haven't been there. Same thing with Christianity. Christians should always be leaning on Christians. Yes. Don't get spiritual with somebody who's not spiritual. It's not real. You can't. You can't. How can they talk to you and give you godly advice or spiritual advice if they're not in they're not in it either? If they're just, you know, they can talk to you about life and you know keep God out of it, but you know, it's like talking to a drunk about Jesus. You let you let, you let him preach to you? Oh yeah, they're talking really good. It's all wasted, right? <laughs> you know? It's like it's like asking somebody for marital advice who's been married five times. What the heck are they going to tell you? Are they going to divorce? I want to tell you. You know? You, you, you get married to advice from somebody who's been married for a long time. Who's in your situation. Who's saved. Who's living for God. Who, who has grown adult children. Who knows? Yeah. Have, you, you, that's just, it makes sense. Right. Yeah. So any, 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 uh, any more questions or more input? Amen. Uh, we're going to, we're going to end it right there. Uh, next, uh, Sunday we will be, uh, or I will be in Ensenada. The church will be open. The church, we will have our regular services next Sunday uh, morning. We will have our service here. Uh, Pastor Robert will be here. Amen. Uh, it will be a good time. Um, Wednesday we have our midweek Bible study. We're finishing up the book of Acts. So Wednesday at 7. And don't forget, Tuesday we'll be here for prayer at 7 o'clock. Amen. So 
Praise God. I hope this helped you guys. Amen. And we're going to be dismissed. So let's bow our hearts as we close the prayer. Well, my Father, we thank you, God, tonight, God, for your word. We thank you, God, for speaking to our hearts, God. God, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you just continue, God, uh, to help us, guide us, teach us, God. But, God, that we would uh, be a living testament unto you, God, that we will no longer live for ourselves, God, but that we'll continue to seek your kingdom, God. And we thank you, God, for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. P.S. Don't let...